Dear students, I am going to talk about terrestrial habitats. As I said earlier, so about 29% of earth's surface is land. They are going to form the, the terrestrial habitats. Remaining 71% is covered with the water. So terrestrial habitats are of different types, forest habitat, grassland habitats, desert habitats, rainforests. So in this uh, in your syllabus, you are going to study only about desert habitats and tropical rainforest habitats, two extreme habitats as an example. So as I said earlier, the terrestrial environment forms 29% of the earth's surface. It is a very complex than aquatic environment. Water form a, a uh, it's a, uh, a medium and which is uh, uh, the environmental factors are not affecting too much and not bringing too much variations in the water, but not so in the terrestrial environment. Here, the terrestrial environment distribution and abundance of terrestrial um, organisms or terrestrial communities are affected by the li uh, limiting factors such as availability of the water. So water scarcity is the highest in the terrestrial environment. Then the organism depend on the rainfall, moisture content, they are not uniform. Uh, throughout the land mass. Some regions getting uh, uh, heavy rainfall, some regions are getting no rainfall or very little rainfall. All these are affecting the, the distribution of the organisms. You know the uh, producers are depend on the, the, uh, the rainfall or the water content. So this is how the consumers are depend on the producers. In that way it is affecting the terrestrial environment. Temperature fluctuations are great which is not affecting too much in the aquatic environment but in the terrestrial environment so much of temperature fluctuation one can see between the arctic region and uh, in the equator and in the desert and that of the, the cold uh, uh, temperate zone. Geomorphological barriers such as rivers, mountains, lakes, seas all these are affecting the the terrestrial habitats and terrestrial communities. Intensity of light, vegetation, soil nutrients and uh, they vary from place to place. So this is what you can see it is uh, uh, going to affect the distribution abundance of terrestrial communities. Terrestrial environment is subdivided into major habitat zones depending on the climate abiotic and biotic factors uh, these are called biomes so the depending on the climate and depending on the abiotic and biotic factors the terrestrial environment or the the land uh, you know the habitats are uh, uh, they are uh, identified as biomes what are biomes or what is biome largest terrestrial community unit where interaction of regional climate with the biota resulted distinctive plants and animal communities. So the regional climate for example in the desert area there is very less rainfall which support only desert plants and the consumers also they are adapted to feed on these plants and they are adapted to this climate. This is how the uh, the biome is uh, you know there is uh, you can see the the interaction of regional climate and uh, with that biota which is going to form the distinctive um, biome communities uh, that we see in terrestrial environment what are the characteristics of the biomes largest terrestrial ecological unit you will see the forest biome grassland biome arctic biome uh, or tundra biome uh, so this is uh, how uh, the largest ecological unit distinct communities influenced by regional climate as i said earlier so it is uh, supporting the uh, uh, the, uh, the climate support uh, some uh, uh, you know typical types of communities 
both climatic and edophic climaxes are present. So, depending on the, the regional climate, you will find the, the distribution of the organisms as well as the edophic climax, nature of the soil also decide the nature of the communities in that particular biome. For example, in the desert uh, uh, biome, you know the, the sand, sand the nature, it is not holding much water. So, it decides the type of producers and type of consumers, those are present in the desert biome. So, biomes overlap to produce ecotomes. Biomes or the terrestrial habitats are not having uh, uh, definite boundaries. So, for example, the, the desert biome overlap with that of the grassland biome. So, you will find the overlapping zones or the transitory zones, they are rich in biodiversity, they are called ecotones. So, major biomes of the world, so here you will see in the world map, the major it is uh, uh, the color demarcation what it indicates the, the major biomes of the world, the tundra biome, taiga biome, grassland biome, chaparral biome, desert biome, uh, desert scrub biome, deciduous forest biome, tropical rainforest biome, alpine biome, all these are the major terrestrial uh, biomes of the world. So, let us uh, concentrate uh, as per your syllabus desert biome. So, desert you will find here the yellow uh, region, it is, the, it is the desert biome which is going to form the one fifth of the the earth's land surface. So, it is dominated by the, the sandy soil or gravel or stony soil you will find. So, depending on that you can see the, the desert producers. So, there are four main types of deserts in, in the world, hot and dry desert, hot desert you will find the Thar desert of uh, India and uh, Sahara desert of Africa. Hot and dry desert, semi arid desert, semi arid desert, coastal desert, cold desert, cold desert you will find arctic uh, deserts, Greenland all these are cold desert. So, what are the limiting factors in desert biome which affect the, the abundance and distribution of organisms? Desert receives very little precipitation or rainfall, annual rainfall is less than 50 millimeter. So, which is not supporting the, the much of the plant life there. So, very few uh, plant life you will find in the desert biome. Daytime temperature is as high as 54 degree centigrade in hot desert and it may uh, range between the a minus 5 degree or you can see the in the cold desert between the in the hot desert the highest will be 54 and the lowest will be something you will find in the night it may be 5 degree centigrade. So, that what I am saying is the temperature fluctuation is the highest uh, in diurnally as well as seasonally. Low humidity or high rate of evaporation. So, humidity is very low, very low uh, water uh, content in the air as well as you can see the high rate of evaporation and uh, you will find the water holding capacity is very less that is why you will find the sand uh, nutrient poor soil and which is uh, less productive in nature. So, what are the desert adaptations? As I said earlier adaptations are the behavioral structural modifications in organisms that help them to survive better in its habitat. So, it is three types physical uh, adaptations, physiological adaptations and behavioral adaptations. So, you will find only few organisms have adapted to survive in the hot and the cold desert. So, what are the nature of the producers in the, the desert biome? So, there are three types of producers, annuals, these are the grasses, they grow quickly you will find, 
they go, grow quickly, rapidly, finish their life cycle during uh, the brief rainfall. So, in the annually, there are uh, the rainfall will be there in a few days. In that period only, you will find uh, some uh, uh, grasses, uh, desert grasses, which will finish their life cycle within month and uh, and they will be in the form of seeds throughout the year. Then succulents. These are the plants, you know that desert plants, they have, they are belonging to the family Euphorbiaceae and Cacti. They are adapted to store water and the leaves and branches are modified into spines, spines and thorns. They are, you know that prickly pears, opuntia, all these you may see in the picture. Then thorny desert shrubs, they having numerous branches emerging from the thick small trunk. They are called sage brush, salt bush, hop sage, all this. So, the, the uh, desert plants, they found in the areas very little water. They are shrubs, cacti you will find, hardy trees you will find. So, the cactus and mesquite that is the shami vraksha uh, you will find. So, they have, uh, you will find that they, they are uh, roots they spread far to absorb the rain water the stems they store water and uh, they have spines leaves are modified into spines uh, to protect plants from being eaten by the the animals these are the adaptations you will find in the desert plants what are the adaptations you will find in the desert animals desert insects such as ants crickets beetles shown here in the picture they have invaginated spiracles to prevent excess evaporations of water during respiration. So, you will find the spiracles are the nostril like structure through that the respiratory gases, gases are taken inside in the insects. They are not exposed outside, they are invaginated. And these, uh, you know, the desert animals, most of this, they live in metabolic water they are not uh, drinking the water they live on metabolic water that is why they feed mainly on fat rich uh, seeds so uh, the fat metabolism yields uh, you know more water uh, than that of carbohydrate metabolism and they live in this metabolic water and they excrete uric acid so uric acid excretion uh, um, uh, you know uh, requires no water or else uh, very less water. So, they have adapted to excrete uric acid instead of urea or ammonia. So, other adaptations what you see in the, the desert lizards uh, such as rhinosoma, calotes, uromastix, they have long legs they lift the body above the ground and balance the body in one leg. If one leg, uh, uh, you know, get, uh, you know, uh, warm up or uh, they feel the heat, then they take out this and uh, they balance on the other leg. Likewise, you can see they shifting uh, uh, their balance between all these four legs, thereby they prevent the body uh, you know affe uh, affected with the too much of heat. Similarly, you can see the sand lizard snakes, uh, rhinosoma and uh, camels uh, desert sheep. They are provided with valves in their nostrils so that the sand is not going to enter during uh, you know the inhale process. Then uh, similar to the pla plants desert lizards the, you will find and the many reptiles insects they have a spiny skin or scaly exoskeleton so desert lizards have spiny tough skin which having uh, scutes or shields you will be able to see here and uh, which prevent the evaporation of the water the scaly tough uh, scutes on the skin then you will find the adaptations of the desert animals they have strong offensive and defensive organs so the defensive organs you will find in the rhinosoma desert lizard whenever they are disturbed they uh, just stream out a small thin film of uh, uh, blood thereby they scare the, the predator uh, 
and many desert uh, you know snakes and lizards they have you uh, they are uh, they produce venom and uh, they are uh, uh, you know they defend them themselves they are venomous and uh, uh, you will find uh, uh, many of uh, they cannot uh, uh, you know the bear the heat during the day time they uh, they they and also in the summer they usually you will find the desert mammals they'll be uh, they east weight during summer period and uh, in the cold desert uh, too much of uh, you know the cold or else uh, you will find cold atmosphere so the many of these uh, reptiles mammals and all they go for hibernation winter sleep during the cold seasons so to prevent prevent uh, from the the um, you know scorching um, heat they go estivation and to prevent from the the freezing cold they go for hibernation winter sleep so these adaptations in the desert kangaroo rat you will find so they getting their moisture from the seed diet they living in burrows during day time avoid extreme heat and they have long uh, uh, legs to prevent the the uh, you know the heat and they jump uh, the long hind uh, legs they can jump easily so the large ears and uh, 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 they can uh, uh, whenever there is a uh, summer uh, this is uh, you can see they can uh, uh, dissipate more heat from the the ear then adaptations in the desert fox they have thick fur which you protect from the hot and uh, bat like ears so radiate body heat and they have uh, thick hair to insulate during cold and also during a uh, hot then uh, they are light colored so they reflect sunlight so the ultimate adaptations what you see in the desert is in the case of camels camels are known as the desert sheep they store fat on their humps and you will find these are used for fat metabolism yield more water camel can tolerate 30% of water loss and normal uh, organic normal animals they just cannot tolerate 10% of water loss they die out of dehydration but the camel adapted to uh, tolerate the 30% of water loss they can drink 40 liters of water whenever they uh, come across a oasis or water point within 10 minutes so water stores in the body cells in the in the stomach in the rumen so these are the adaptations you will find in the uh, desert sheep or else in the camel so the nostrils uh, have uh, you know the uh, uh, cover to prevent the, the entry of the the sand they have a tough leathery mouth for eating thorny plants uh, they have uh, the fat stored hump you will find and long powerful leg they can walk in the sand easily and you can see the foot pads help them to uh, you know the uh, walk in uh, easily in the sand so all these adaptations uh, make uh, you know um, to withstand the uh, tough desert climate and as well as the, the environment so thank you so this is about the desert biome and the expected question you will uh, in the examination is limiting factors in the desert biome adaptations of desert biota and adaptations of desert animals thank you